Maureen, thanks for joining us. Thanks for inviting me, Mike. Uh, you recently moved from New York, well, just next to New York, to Miami, a city that's just been declared the new Wuhan. How do you feel about this? Uh, well, I am just staying away from South Beach in the crowded bars. Um, I wear a mask at all times when I'm out and I try to stay away from people. It's the only thing we can do. The, uh, do you think enough's been done by the government, uh, you know, local and state and, and federal? I think that our mayor and our county mayor are doing a great job. I am not so thrilled by this governor, who, by the way, I didn't vote for because I just moved here, uh, or the president of the country. Um, you know, is it a hoax? Is it just going to go away? You know, and if we figure out a way to shine a light into the body under the skin or maybe inject disinfectant, like a cleaning, we'll be just fine. But that doesn't seem to be working. You know, our COVID response is dangerously below international levels. And every day we have another, I don't know, 10,000 people in Miami ending up in the hospital. Why is this, though? I mean, I'm just surprised. I mean, Miami or Florida was doing so well. Uh, we're all thinking that COVID-19 is a winter disease. And uh, all of a sudden it's got pretty, uh, pretty raunchy, to say the least, in, uh, in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think they were very late in closing down the state and our governor kept insisting, we're not New York, we're not New York, it's not going to happen to us, it's not going to happen here. And he's still actually denying that there is as bad a situation as there is. We read uh, that so many people have been hospitalised and that many hospitals in Miami have no ICU beds left. Uh, have you heard the same thing? Yeah, they, I just read that at least one third of the state is at 100 percent. The hospitals in one third of the state are at 100 percent capacity right now. And, you know, Miami is like the epicenter of the epicenter. But there's still uh, nightly beach parties and, and bars are open and people are just walking around like there's nothing going on. No masks, no distancing, no nothing. The, um, I just noticed though the uh, on footage from the uh, from the US and actually from basically any place that has a beach and a bar, uh, there seems to be probably a f very lax uh, attitude towards uh, the social distancing. Do you think maybe we could probably swing the blame a bit away from the uh, the, the local state federal governments to uh, maybe individuals not just adhering to just basic common sense. Everybody is listening to different people, and that's the problem. We have, we have a governor saying one thing. We have our mayors who are probably saying the right thing. Um, and we have a president who takes no responsibility. So seriously, you know, people don't know who to listen to. And the other fact is a lot of people tend to get their news from Facebook and Twitter. So, you know. What needs to be said about that, but not much. <laughs> just yeah. just um, looking at, um, I mean, the, the opposition there, we, the polls are out, uh, Joe Biden is leading, but is that because he hasn't yet come out of the basement? I'm just a bit curious because what's, what's the, uh, the, uh, the, the Democrats or Joe Biden's view on, on COVID-19 and the effect it's having? Well, if you read about what, Obama and Biden left Trump and Pence when they left the White House. There were books and books full of how to of, of information how to deal with um, pandemics, and Trump and Pence and his people just threw the books away, and now they're just saying Obama left us with nothing. And it's like, well, you've had three and a half years to do something about it. And now you're saying oh, the whole reason why 138,000 people are dead is because Obama left you with nothing? You have been in the communication business basically all your life, a DJ in deepest Moscow, um, uh, photographer for Public uh, Image Limited, um, organised rock bands and goes on and on and on. But it's all about communication. Do you think the communication process is somewhat muddled at the moment. Absolutely, absolutely. 
you know, I, I saw a thing just on the news tonight, and they were saying it's no longer red states versus blue states. It's red versus dark red. So there are Trump people who refuse to believe that this is anything but a hoax. And there are other Republicans saying, wait a second, I think that we have to start dealing with this in a more rational manner. Look, I saw a, a, a pic um, and it said, um, Florida, congratulations, you've just become the global epicenter for the <laughs> pandemic. And what are you going to do now? And Florida We're going says, to Disney World. <laughs> We're going to Disney, that's right. Now, I mean, just that alone, it has the connotations that maybe Florida is part to blame, just the people like, it ain't going to hurt us. We're, we're by the beach. We've got fresh air and tequila. Yeah, no. Um, the thing about Florida is um, I think it's a state unto itself. You know, there's always a story, Florida man does this or Florida woman does this. So why would they be any different when you're dealing with safety precautions for a worldwide pandemic? No, it's, but, a, it's a place to, to live and enjoy, party and have a great time. But right now, it's not such a great time. Florida recently no. registered a record-breaking 15,299 coronavirus cases in one single day, smashing the previous record in New York. Uh, yep. Are residents scared by this reporting? I mean, it would sort of scare the bejeebies out of me. I don't know about yourself and, and the and the others there. It, it is a scary thing. And, uh, you know, simple things like going to the supermarket are, you know, always exhausting. Um, but I think that the people where I am are paying attention to this. They're wearing masks, they're distancing, they're being considerate to people in shops and, and, and out on the street. Um, but I think farther south, we have a problem because there's a lot of tourists still coming in mm. and and you can go any night after 10 o'clock and and the streets are full people partying and no masks no distancing there's boats that tie together and have big parties all the time it's just not uh helping at all unless then then unless they adhere to what's been told I mean, how are they go to? Um, how would you ever get the curve down? This curve that's just escalating and and uh, annihilating uh, your your state. How would they get it down? By telling people to wear masks and stay apart. But it's not working, you know, is it? It's not working. No, it's not working. It's not working. They think that by closing the bars at eleven o'clock, it's going to make a difference. <laughs> oh, it's 10 o'clock now. They have a curfew. We have a curfew from mm. 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Um, but I don't think that's working. And, you know, I can drive by any of these outdoor bars and there's people just all crowded together in the patios drinking and no masks, no, no distancing, no nothing. Mm. So I don't know where people are getting their news. Um, Facebook. But it, yeah, but the point is, is that you have too many conflicting um, ideas of what we need to be doing. Is Miami vulnerable to civil unrest in the face of these extended restrictions throughout Miami and Florida? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I don't think there were very many, there weren't many problems with the George Floyd protests either. Um, not like New York. Um, I think that they're starting to realize that there's a bit of a problem and it's time to do your, do, you know, do your duty, mm. wear a mask. Uh, the, the other thing, uh, moving from um, the cold part of uh, the US to the wacky and warm part of the US, uh, Highland Ventures, uh, your photography, what's in the pipeline for Maureen Baker and Bob Tulipan? I am, um, I worked on so far, three of the books that the three guys in Public Image put out, and I'm working on the fourth one now. Mm. And uh, and he's working on a, a documentary about CBGB theater, not CBGB the club, and also a book with a couple of friends. So, you know, people are keeping us busy. Um, yeah, so. Well. It's all happening, as they would say. It's all happening in downtown Florida or Miami. And um, 
all the best. We hope the vaccine comes out. If not, uh, I do have a suggestion. I don't know if it works, but it tastes great. Uh, copious amounts of margarita, very strong margaritas would help. <laughs> uh, Maureen Baker, a photographer extraordinaire, um, Miami resident now, and no longer, yeah. no longer in Jersey or New York, and uh, enjoying the, uh, the beautiful sunshine and COVID. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. <laughs>